But what a sensational start. Very first ball of the test match, and Richard Hadley has struck. And Rahman, the man who made 96 in the first test, is out. Unbelievable. Almost a replay of the first innings in Christchurch. Certainly not hitting him too high. It was below the knee rolls and just playing around his front pad. And Rahman out the very first delivery. Beautifully played away. Backward a point. Here's the first boundary of the test match. Morrison dropping short and wide. And Prabhaka smacks it away to the fence. Nicely turned away four to square this time. Chase back for Martin Crow. There'll be time for two more here. The ball slowing fairly quickly on uh, this green lush outfield. Remembering that it rained quite heavily here yesterday. And uh, two runs now to Prabaka. So he is four. So is the total. Right, here we go now. Hadley bowling to Prabaka. Nicely turned away again. Backward or square again. Prabaka will have time for two here as Danny Morrison comes round. And these Indian players very, very strong off the pads, as we saw there. Beautifully played again by Mandraka as Morrison again heads down leg side. And an easy two runs here. There is Martin Sneddon, who's patrolling the fine leg or deep backward square leg area. And so two further runs. Prabhaka is on seven. And Draker is on two. Beautifully played away. Backward a point. Here's the first boundary of the test match. Morrison dropping short and wide. And Prabaka smacks it away to the fence. That's what I was referring to before. He was straying it down leg side and therefore getting away with bowling it wide. But this one is wide outside off stump. And just perfect position to play the cut. No third man down there, and it probably would have gone wide of third man anyway. Full toss, a slower ball. Held back by Morrison, but overpitched. And a couple of runs here for Prabhaka as Martin Sneddon angles round. And a couple of runs to end the over. And it's 20 for the loss of one. Now it's Morrison bowling to Mandraka. Oh, and he went for it, and he got it away nicely. Back with a point. Morrison dropping short and outside the off stump. Mandraker smacked it away through backward point for four runs. He has certainly got the width necessary here, Mandraker. And loves to cut. So that's the end of the over. Let's have another look at this. Morrison this time, rather than around about the leg stump, is outside off stump. And the ball sat up nicely. And Mandraka has his first boundary. So 36 now for the loss of one. Pass Smith. It's going down to the boundary line for four. But it came from the body, or the thigh pad. No shot was offered, so no runs count. It's been wiped out by umpire Steve Woodward. No shot was deemed to have been played as the ball went from the thigh pad of uh, Manoj Prabhaka. So it's a dot in the scorebook. I've seen less convincing shots get to league bars. That's right. So John Bracewell's first ball is well up well flighted and nicely played by sanjay mandraker he's found the gap away on the offside it's gone for four well john braceball prepared to toss the ball up right away sanjay mandraker taking up the challenge and that's a very good cover drive for four and i've said it before and i'll say it again my old coach used to tell me that it's a damn sight easier to bowl your second ball if your first ball hasn't been hit before and that was jack alabaster he knew a bit about it 
So 45 for one. We've had 24 overs so far in the innings. Danny Morrison's to bowl the 25th and now joining Peter Sharp until lunch, Grant Nisbet. Nicely played away. This could go to the fence. It's beautifully timed, in fact, by Mandraker. And four further runs to this very talented batsman. His third four now. He's 23. And India nearly to their 50. 49 for one. That's a perfect shot and one that the Indians play very well. Anything that strays down league side, they hit square of the wicket, directly square, beautifully. A lot of batsmen would have tried to get that fine, but they hit it so well square. And after hitting the ball, um, Prabhaka and Mandraka just trotted through, uh, looking as if they knew all the time it was going for four. Then they got a wee bit of a anxious moment as it seemed to slow up towards the boundary. But oh, a lovely shot from uh, Mandraka. Well, that's a useful delivery. That might have just caught Simone Schreker on the fingers. He's not going to show anybody, though. The end of the over, 49 for one. But first up after lunch. Very nice day at McLean Park in Napier. A little bit of high cloud around, but lots of sunshine. Light sea breeze coming in from the northeast. And this is Sanjay Mandraker facing Hadley. Nicely worked into the leg side. The Indian players very strong off their pads. The yeah, outfield's still a little on the slow side after all the rain in Napier over the last couple of days. John Wright does the fielding. And it's time for three runs to uh, Sanjay Mandraka. That's an indication of uh, perhaps how slow this outfield is. It was a very well hit shot. But the boundary there is not all that long. And they ran three while John Wright chased after it. But a pretty tired looking delivery from Richard Headley. A little bit overcast and cloudy before, a little cool before lunch, but the clouds have once again have dissipated and we have a lovely afternoon. Whipped away this time by Prabhaka. Morrison has a bit of ground to make to his right this time. The second run is called for. Morrison can't prevent it this time. Good return as usual. And two runs for Prabhaka. Just pulled the bat inside the line. Good delivery, though, from Hadley. And the end of the over comes at 65 for one. Come on, Forced away down the onside. Good shot from Prabhaka. That uh, area is unprotected. And uh, Danny Morrison having to move from the offside to do the fielding. And two runs for Prabhaka. End of the over from Richard Hadley. And India 70 for the loss of one. But short this time from Martin Sneddon and Mandraker quickly into position. And he's put it away backward a point for four runs. We've already uh, seen the strength of Mandraker on the cut. And Martin Sneddon not able to bowl it close enough to him. And that's an easy one for Mandraker to put away. Four boundaries now for Mandraker. He's 34. India 74 for one. Fielded by the man in close, Martin Sneddon. The batsman had remained in his crease, though. And the end of the over, 74 for one. Richard Hadley, 12th over now. Has the only wicket to fall. Bowling now to Prabhaka. Oh, that was in the air. But it was well clear of the fieldsman. Martin Snit, uh, Martin Crow. This one just rising a little bit. On to Prabhaka. Just getting a little steep on him and went very square with uh, Crow standing a little straighter. Nicely played away through the offside. That's four. That really was a powerful shot off the back foot. Played by Manoj Prabhaka. Bit wide from Richard Hadley. Certainly gave the batsman plenty of room to uh, swing his arms, to play a shot with a great deal of freedom. That was nicely hit. Yes, it was a beautiful shot because he didn't go all that far back. He didn't have to, of course, because the ball was wide enough. But he was playing it with 
most of his weight on the back foot. He came forward again just as he to transfer his weight onto the soles of his feet, really, so that his weight was going in towards the shot. There's Ian Smith. He's probably had the quietest day today that he's had for a long time because hardly any balls are getting past the bat. And it's only the wide ones that he has to chase, really, so that most of the things that are coming to him, he's got to do a fair bit of work. Otherwise, his bread and butter stuff isn't there. It's another beautiful shot. The strength of these Indian players really is off their pads, and uh, Manoj Prabhaka hitting that ball very neatly out to deep mid-wicket for a couple. The timing really was very nice. Anything on their legs, they play quite magnificently. They always have. Anything that you strayed down just on the leg side of middle, you see, there's a ball that most New Zealand batsmen would have de would have defended. And now Danny Morrison back for his 10th over. It'll be Sanjay Mandraka to take strike. Mandraka on 38. Martin Sneddon down at fine leg. There's one run for Mandraka. So this is how Sanjay Mandraka has scored his runs. Some boundaries square of the wicket. That lovely drive through the extra cover region off Bracewell first ball that John Bracewell bowled in fact came down the wicket lofted a nice shot way out there for four back past the bowler and two runs as Trevor Franklin gives chase and that's all it'll be so two runs for Sanjay Mandraker He's 41, and the score is 89 for one. Well, that was a better line. He went wide on the crease uh, on that occasion as he went into his delivery stride and angled it in, and then bounced the batsman as well. He did that earlier in the morning when he went wide and bowled a bouncer to Prabhaka, which didn't rise as much as that one did, and he had to play it, and it came up and gloved him quite nastily. But that one was quite harmless. It was down through, and that's the sort of bouncer that we'll get today. It won't come up viciously. If you want to bounce it, if you want to get some life out of the pitch, you've got to throw it in so short that the batsmen have plenty of time to decide what to do. Well, there we see the attempted uh, pull away on the leg side. It's a bit too much pace from Danny Morris and therefore Manoj Prabhaka. Yes, after you said, have we seen a hook shot today? I, I was trying to think of whether we'd seen any cross batted shots on the onside at all. And I can't recall any prior to that one there, which was only a, a uh, half-hearted one anyway. But uh, there's been some uh, cut shots played, of course, and they played them beautifully. In the air, but between the slip and gully, chased on here for Trevor Franklin. He stops the boundary. There's two runs for Manoj Prabhaka. It went in the air through where third slip would have been. He wasn't there, so it was a safe shot. 91 for one. for a court behind and New Zealand do finally have a wicket Ian Smith taking the catch tumbling down the leg side and the breakthrough from Danny Morrison well we were just saying that something's likely to happen and we see here actually with all due respect to Morrison it was almost a wasted delivery down the leg side he managed to get it high enough and the batsman just couldn't quite get out of the way but it was down leg side and a good catch here from Ian Smith Here it is again. It rose a wee bit on Manshraker. He tried to whip it away. And Ian Smith doesn't miss those ones. No, well, he's had to wait a long time today for that. Just getting a little steep on trying to get out of the way of it, actually, in the end. Not quite able to do so. And a little touch, perhaps, off the glove down leg side. So here's another look at it. You can see a depth of deflection there as it rose uh, quite steeply. And Ian Smith tumbling away to his left, taking a very good catch. And uh, Manjreka out for 42, caught Smith, bowled Morrison. And this brings to the wicket Mohammed Azraddin, the player who was absolutely magnificent in the first innings of that uh, first test. 92 for two. The New Zealand field appealing. Azardine stands there. Steve Woodward says no.
Well, it's certainly a confident appeal here. The whole New Zealand side going up. It was a good one. Did it come off his glove or not? Just cocked up around the corner. And we'll see from the other end. Watch carefully. Yes, well, I'll let you decide on that one. Certainly the New Zealand field has their opinion on it. Azaradine survives. 92 for two. The Indian score is now 100 when they come back for the two. In fact, they might even get three here. They've taken the two now. No, just that's all they'll take. And that's the Indian 100 posted as Rudin goes to three. Now, that is a perfect indication of the strength of the forearms and the excellence of the timing of Mohammed Azaruddin. Gosh, that was a very well hit shot. Unfortunately for uh, Azaruddin, fortunately for New Zealand, it went straight to John Wright. The ball well, was magnificent player. timing, wasn't it? Yes, he's a superb player, Azaruddin. He really is. Again, already I've seen him. The pleasure of seeing him score 159 at Pukakura Park. It was just a, a marvellous display. And the 48 he had in the first innings of the Test in Christchurch was a little cameo, which really was sparkling. It was a beautiful knock. He's got the capacity to just take any attack apart. He's hit it in the air. Wright's going back for it. And Wright drops the catch. Staggering. John Wright did such good work to get to it. And then when he got there, he spilled it. This was a mistimed flick shot on the leg side by Azaruddin. It went high in the air. Look at Wright getting there. Hmm. Well, that'll be a real desolation for Martin Sneddon. You could see just from the look of Azaruddin's head that he lost sight of it. He lost control of it. He was trying to play the ball over Martin Crow in the catching position behind square and down to the boundary behind square. And in fact, the ball didn't come to him as quickly as he expected. And he just, he lost it completely, but he must have been gone then. Here is uh, Mohammed Azaruddin. He's on seven, facing Martin Sneddon. And he's launched himself into a big on drive here. I think aiming down the offside, but it didn't matter. He hit through the line and Trevor Franklin has the chase and the batsmen have three runs. Azaruddin in strike. Sneddon the bowler. And that was short, oh. and Azra Dean is magnificent off the back foot. That fairly fizzed to the fence. Then, first ball of the morning, and it's Danny Morrison bowling to Mohammed Azra Dean. Oh dear. Nearly got a little nick on that. But I think that might show the intentions of the day. I'm just going to say, is that a sign of things to come, perhaps? So I'm sure that the Indians would be very anxious to get as many runs as they can today to bat well. But uh, I thought they might have had a wee bit of a look at it first, just to see that it's going to be the same way. You see, Ezra had a real flog at that. Well, that's a lovely shot. That's the first boundary of the morning. It beats the diving Martin Crow and into the fence for four. So Ezra takes four runs to take his total to 23. It's 130 for two. That's a beautiful shot. Now, one of the real strengths of Ezra you see, he hits it so square. That's a lovely shot. Cut away down to third man. There was a third man put in place there fairly early on yesterday, but he's not there at the moment. And Azaradine clips it away for four. It won't be too long before he gets there. That's a, a lovely shot. A very wide ball from Morrison. I gave him every opportunity. And if you, if you can't cut those, you won't be able to cut any, really. Oh, that's not a bad ball at all. Rabaka made a late decision. Danny Morrison a little happier there to see the batsman uncomfortable and a bit ungainly as he went down. I think he was going to get up and try and play it initially. And then he saw it was rising higher than uh, would have been comfortable for him. So eventually he tried to turn himself inside out and get underneath it. It was sort of those ones that really you could play. You could stand up and play. The difficult thing is, of course, is he's got he's so accustomed to going under the ball. You see, really, if he stood up and played the ball, it would be much easier. Oh, clean through, Azaruddin. Richard Hadley comes to the end of the over. That's 
a nice shot by Prabaka. Very strong off the pads. This should be his first boundary of the day. It's just slowing near the grandstand and it's just been kept in the, the field of play. It's quite wet out there. And so Prabaka has to settle for three runs. Edge and away down through third slip. Didn't really carry in the air to any great extent. And it's gone to the fence for four. Edged away again. Had a little more bat on this one. And once again, there's a chase, a great batch after it this time. And there'll be two runs. Well, there we are, Glenn. There's the wagon wheel for Manoj Prabhaka. And uh, it's been a long time there. He's only hit four boundaries, though. It's hit as a redeem. He ducked under it, decided to be brave and take it on the body. But that, uh, even though probably won't indicate it, that might have hurt. Yes, it was very short. It just didn't get high enough, and he wasn't able to get right under it. But fairly harmless. Just took him on the top of the shoulder. An appeal for a catch behind. Steve Woodward again is impassive about that. The Indian captain looking to attack. Ball, good length, kept low. As we're then looking to crack it away, is comprehensively bowled. So that's 150 for three, and as we're out for 33. I think he gets an inside nick on this. Just watch the line of it. He's outside off stump, angling in. No, perhaps it may have in fact flicked his pad, but it's knocked out leg stump. Azradin just hitting across this one. Morrison on target. And Azradin this morning not really just staying with his shots long enough. You can see him playing right across the line of this one. Fairly full in length. Just almost walking towards the ball rather than extending. And over goes leg. It's a nice shot off the back foot. Chase on here by Andrew Jones and by Martin Sneddon. It shouldn't go to the boundary. Back the double act out of deep extra cover. And the return of the ball pretty quickly. Almost back to the bowler's end. Morrison two being sucked, but he's yet to score. Caught. Danny Morrison does it again. Ben Sarkar's return to test cricket is unsuccessful. Up for Norks. Well, could it be that with those two close-in leg-side catches that Ben Sarkar was conscious of Morrison bowling it short at him, but instead he bowled outside the off-stop. It was just a straight delivery of Ben Sarkar dabbing at it, following it wide, and perhaps a little preconceived before that ball was bowled. Given width and well driven. That's a fine shot. And it's four runs for Manoj Prabhaka. And Ken Rutherford just straying wide of the off stump, the ball full of length, right in the slot for the Indian right hander, moving into the shot and playing a delightful cover drive. It takes Prabhaka to 72, 163 for four. Sneddon with two slips and a silly mid off and a gully. That's a good shot by Tendulkar straight down the ground. John Wright with the chase from mid on. They've taken two. And they're going to come back for the third as Wright's throw comes back to the bowler's end from long on. Three runs for Tendulkar from a very fine on drive. He goes to eight. It's 168 for four. Rutherford to Tendulkar. Another fine shot through the offside. On by Danny Morrison down to long off. And there's two runs for Sachin Tindulka. Takes him to 12. Oh, 
could be a mix-up here at the bowler's end. And there's nobody home. Rutherford had followed through. And there was no one there to take off the bails. Had there been, it would have been a uh, dismissal. Field from the New Zealanders. No, says Brian Aldridge. And that one just turned a little. There's certainly no chance of uh, an off or didn't get near it with the, with the bat. But the ball did turn quite a lot onto Prabaka. Struck away down the offside. That's a beautifully hit shot by Tendalka. Morrison again has the chase. And as you can see, the ball pulling up very quickly. Ball going away down the fine leg. And uh, one run taken. And a bit of back involved in that. So one further run to Tendalka brings up the Indian 200. 200 now for the loss of four. Nicely guided away down through the unprotected third man area and Franklin has quite a long chase. He'll overhaul it just before it gets to the fence and the batsman will have uh, three runs. There's been a third at man in for most of this Indian innings but with the new ball being taken I suppose they feel obliged to have more slips in there. Good bounce on that one. Well directed. And Tendalka, who's only a short fellow, managed to get underneath. He seems to be a fairly confident young fellow, uh, Tendalka. He's not afraid to go into his shots, but there he got one that would really hurry him up. Hadley now to Tendalka. Well, cracks it away. That's a fine shot. That sped to the fence. Well, that's the shot of a player who knows what it's about in test cricket. Really, it was a bad ball from Hadley. Forget about Hadley, it was just that it was a bad ball. And look at the way he climbed over that. Down appeal for OBW. Not out, says Brian Aldridge. That's the most enthusiasm we've had today from the New Zealanders. Very close indeed with Hadley. Not showing any signs of great disappointment. He's been there before. The ball just perhaps going a little bit too high, perhaps. Field by the New Zealanders out. Caught down the leg side. Prabaka doesn't think so. He says that it hit the thigh pad. But he's off anyway. The umpire put the finger up. And Prabaka is out for 95. Well, I think he's off. He certainly doesn't want to go. Um, down the leg side, indicating it touched his hip. It's a matter of whether or not, of course, it touched the bat or the glove on the way through as well. But that's academic. Kabaka out for 95. Port Smith bowled hand. Now, let's just watch the replay here. Pitched about the middle, short. And we can't tell, of course, from up here whether or not it got by those gloves and flicked them on the hip or whether it just flicked the glove and the hip on the way through. The umpire would be tending to go perhaps on two sounds. Obviously, Prabhaka unhappy about it. And 95, obviously looking forward. Let's watch closely. Very difficult to tell indeed. One wicket since lunch for the New Zealanders. That of Prabhaka. Better go it down the leg side. No, says Steve Woodward. That's a lovely shot down the offside. Big chase here for Andrew Jones. The ball starting to slow now. Didn't really have the timing. And the batsman will have time for three easy runs. As Tendulka played beautifully through the line of the ball and picked up three. So here in his 105th test match, averaging 30, over 4,000 runs. His highest score also made against uh, Sri Lanka. Home test, 86-87. That's a powerful shot down the ground. It's probably worth three. Andrew Jones has got the chase. Yeah. 
Well, he's lofted it, and he's caught. Caught by John Wright down at deep mid-off. And so Sachin Tendulkar's opportunity to reach the 100 is gone. He's dismissed for 88. I'm just about to say, actually, and it's, I suppose, easy to be wise after the event, that it seemed that he had been given instructions, or maybe he'd taken the instructions himself, to get on with the job this morning, to really give it a go, and to not waste time in getting towards the 100 that he was moving seemingly inexorably towards. But, again, just playing the shot, which was bred, perhaps, of impetuosity, because the ball was never really there to be driven. A tremendous disappointment for him and for the small crowd here, but he'll get a great reception from those people here. Bowl him. Back goes the leg stump. The middle stump's gone missing. Danny Morrison has his second wicket of the over. And India crashing now. have lost their ninth wicket at 356, and Danny Morrison has five for the innings. And that's his third haul because when he had the first innings five-wicket bag in Christchurch, that was the second time he had... Uh, five in an innings and at that stage it was a really remarkable comeback for Danny Morrison look at this the ball just flicking from the pads of Wasson and cannoning into the stumps so the batsman just indicating a little lack of ability there with the ball down leg side and he went outside it and therefore gave a real chance for the ball to come from his pads into his stumps most batsmen would have stayed on the crease line and pushed down the line of the ball and wouldn't have had the chance of that to happen but he was well outside leg stump when he was hit as you can see, the players are leaving the field, which indicates that uh, Mohammed Azharuddin has declared the Indian innings closed at 358 for nine. So Richard Hadley is now doubly disappointed, no doubt, that he wasn't able to take that last wicket, which would, would have ended the innings. Trevor Franklin dropping the catch. So Hawani and Raju are the not-out batsmen, and India have declared at 358 for nine. So there is the Indian scoreboard, remembering this morning that they started at 348 for seven, and the batsmen dismissed were Tendalka, who was caught down at uh, deep mid-off by John Wright of Morrison for 88. And in the same over, as the crowd applause in the background for Danny Morrison, uh, Wasson out, bowled by Morrison, off his pads without scoring. Raju and Hawani were the not-out batsmen. And uh, Danny Morrison's uh, 5 for 90 is the best for a bowler in a test match at Napier, surpassing Imran Khan's 5 for 106 in 1978-79 five for 98 and in fact from Danny Morrison Richard Hadley three for 73 unlucky not to pick up the last wicket Martin Sneddon one for 104 John Brace will bowl pretty well without any success and Ken Rutherford filled in the gaps with nine overs so Mohammad Azharuddin declaring the Indian innings closed at 358 for nine and unfortunately for Sachin Tendolka 88 was the best he could do just 12 short but of course he still has time to become the youngest ever test century scorer during the lunch break today, Television New Zealand newsman John Newton spoke to Sachin Tendall. Well, for a start, how did it feel almost making a century? Uh, I was very happy that I scored 88, but quite disappointed to not take that 100. And I think I played very badly. That, that shot I played, uh, I wasn't played that shot. So I defended because I got two boundaries consecutive. Uh, in consecutive moves, that's why I tried. That time, that time I made a mistake. Did you feel you might have been about to make your century? Yeah, a little. You had hopes of getting there? Yeah, I, I was quite confident to get a uh, century in this game. When you went out this morning, how did you feel? It's very sad, very unhappy. <laughs> how is it being the youngest in the Indian team, only 16 years old? How does it feel? It feels great and I'm proud to represent my country at the age of 16, but all the players also grow up with me very well. And it doesn't make me feel that I'm 16 and they are elder to me. That's the main thing. So everybody's friendly to me. What happens when you go out there as a 16-year-old? Does it overwhelm you? Nothing. I just see the ball, that's all. Nothing else. Then. What do you think about it? And just to stay on the wicket as long as possible. And runs will come automatically. How do you feel about the Indian team? Is it capable of beating New Zealand? It's capable of beating New Zealand, but nobody can say in cricket that we can beat anybody. Else. It's come to know after the game. Well, do you have any advice 
for a 16 year old who's in representing their country to other young people who may have the same ideas? I think they should practice as hard as possible and in the correct way. Not in, they should be true to us, uh, themselves. Uh, well, that's Sachin Tendulkar talking after his innings four years ago in Napier against New Zealand. Since then, he's gone on to prove that he's one of the great batsmen of the world, and we'll get to see him, along with a number of others in this Indian team, hopefully in the not-too-far-distant future, when this test in Hamilton finally gets underway. But no sign of that, and as far as the conditions are concerned, well, the umpires are coming out and having a look at ten past one. Hopefully play away at two o'clock. We did have a shower about ten, fifteen minutes ago, but it wasn't too heavy and has gone away. Let's go back to that test in Napier now, and and the, uh, the test in Napier and it's Prabhaka to Trevor Franklin. Take it on the pad. That oh, it could be a mix up here. Right scrambles back. Oh, general confusion there amongst the New Zealand batsmen. They ended up returning to their original creases. But it could have been a shocking shambles. Well, that's one of those things that happen sometimes when the batsman has no idea of where the ball's gone. And it did look as if right and Franklin had terrible communication problems which could well have resulted in either one of them but in this case it was right end that the ball went to could have gone for Barker now to bowl to Trevor Franklin must be whipped away by Franklin Hawani has the chase he might just cut it off no he won't that's four runs finally judge shot by Franklin just whipping it off his toes and the first boundary of the innings in fact the first runs of the innings well, he played that um, very fine indeed. Just falling over a little bit, going over towards off stump uh, with his head a little bit outside his feet. But uh, picking it up nicely and starting his innings with a boundary. Trevor Franklin will be pleased with that. Thick outside edge from Trevor Franklin. It might go to the fence again. He's put a fair bit on it. Bill's been chasing, but Franklin has his second boundary. Not totally in control of it, I suspect. But over the top of it at least, and the second boundary for Trevor Franklin. And Ash Prabhaka bowling to John Wright. It's nicely worked into the leg side. That ball should go for four. The outfield still a little on the slow side. There was some overnight drizzle in Napier. The outfield is very lush as it has been throughout all three and a bit days of this test match so far. Yes, as we saw in Christchurch, John Wright very strong on the leg side. And that's the problem that Prabhaka has. If he's moving the ball, of course, away from John Wright's bat, he must get in nice and close to try and get that edge and commit him to play. Worked away past the square leg umpire. That should be four more for John Wright. The second time he's hit the ball through that area to the boundary. He's going to go to 27, John Wright 17. Pulled away by Franklin. Watson starting the new over with a short ball. Good shot by Trevor Franklin. He goes to 14. Oh, that was a real wild one. We'll go down to the boundary for four buys. In a one-day match, of course, it would have been caught as four wides. Sadly, in a test match, it counts against the wicketkeeper. Four buys. So that's the New Zealand 50 posted. And that's a 50-run opening partnership between Wright and Franklin. Other fieldsmen in run-saving positions, mid-wicket, mid-on, and square leg on the leg side. We've got a backward point cover and mid-off on the offside. Hiwani to Franklin. Ball is in the air for a long time. Somebody said catch it up. They I'm were looking for a catch, I think. It uh, was a bump ball. Yeah, I didn't think it was um, looking as if it was going to carry enough. Hit it into the ground, I think, and it wasn't quite ever going to carry to Raman. Lovely shot and great piece of fielding in the gully. It's young Raju. Tindolka picked up the, uh, the ball after the stop had been made by Raju. Look at this, Franklin coming on to the front foot, opening the face, setting the ball deliberately down behind square. Good anticipation by Venkatapati Raju. Again, they're very confident about the OEW appeal, but Franklin had come well forward, and I imagine he was hit outside the line of off stump there. Coming in from outside the line of off stump, and yes, it wouldn't have hit him in the line to be out LBW. 
the batsman, if he's playing a shot, has to be hit in the nine inches, which run from stumps at one end to stumps at the other end. And so really there's not a very wide width for the bowler to make contact. Very well played by Trevor Franklin. Four runs out through the covers. Got on the front foot to that short ball, which was wide from Prabhaka. That really was well played by Franklin. Fair spit across this lush up with good timing here. That's a very good shot from Trevor Franklin. It's six. It went over the boundary line on the full. Hirani tossed that one right up to Trevor Franklin. A big front foot went down the wicket. Look at the air given to this ball by Hirani right in the slot for Franklin. What a good bold shot. Well, if we said right from the start of play after lunch today that Trevor Franklin looks to be playing Hirani with a great deal more confidence. Between bat and pad, flicking the pad on the way through. Very Beautiful well bowled there by Kevill there. I think Franklin thought that was going to leave him. And he was over to cover it, and it came back very viciously. Look how far it came back. He must have thought after it went through that there's every chance that it was going to bowl him too because it completely did him. Went straight through the gap. Must have just flicked his pad, but still continued on down the uh, leg side. You can't deny that. Done for 13 for Hiwani in his 12th over. The appeal this time for a catch. That looked pretty solid, but Alpine Aldrich says not out. That certainly looked more interesting. We'll have to have a look at that one. It looked as if it was going into his pad, so it looked as if it... Well, did it come from the outside of his pad or did it come from the outside of his bat? It's impossible to tell there. Only the, the players and the umpire will know that, and the umpire said no. That's the best possible response from John Wright. Short and wide from Hawani. It's not a four, but it's a couple of runs for John Wright. Lifted away on the onside by Franklin, but he's picked the gap nicely. The timing wasn't that great, but he's got a couple of runs for it, Trevor Franklin. And he's starting to look a lot more assured at the crease now. He's had his moments of doubt. In fact, in the last over, he was well beaten by Capital Dev. Capital Dev bowling to John Wright. He's played it down to fine leg. Big chase on here for Raji, but it's too fine for him. It's gone over the line. And the call from Steve Woodward is four runs for John Wright. Set the ball away nicely through the leg side. And he'll take two. That's all there is as the throw comes back from uh, Tindulka, away out of mid wicket. Well, Wright using his feet, he was determined to come after him and lofted it away by John Wright. It's gone to the boundary at six runs, and that is John Wright's 50. In a most emphatic fashion, Wright clouts one over the fence, goes to 50, his 17th half century in test cricket and that is the first time that John Wright has elected to come down to get Hawani and you saw that he was coming before the bowler had even let the ball go he was well on the way down with very quick footwork indeed to get into position to be able to just crunch the ball over the long on boundary that's a magnificent shot from John Wright That also sort up the Hunter partnership, of course, 101 without loss. That'll cause Hawani to worry a wee bit because previously Wright had been playing him from the pitch and that gave Hawani more or less free reign to be able to control his length. Now he's got something more to worry. That's a nice positive stroke again by Wright. Blunted it away down the offside. Lovely off drive. And that's four further runs. Right again. Unleashing a big shot on the leg side. Nice piece of fielding, though. As a redeem, he's come to this country with a big reputation as one of the best fieldsmen in the world. He certainly hasn't done anything to dissuade us from that point of view. The one he's still in the attack. Right facing. Right goes again. Over. Long on again. And four runs this time. He's determined to see Hawani off in a big way. And he's picked up Hawani this time and put him over long on for four more. Oh, that's good cricket, really good cricket. He came down, but not so far that time, and waited for it, and was prepared to take on Raman, 
who was back at a fairly deep mid on. In fact, Raman is going quite a long way back now, further towards the long on boundary. He's coming around fairly straight, too. This is good positive cricket for John Wright. He swung this one away, and it's four more. Well, this is a worry for Hirwani. Wright has decided to take to the biggest threat amongst the Indian bowlers. Well, right with a fair sprinkling of fours there. Most of them square of the wicket on the onside or down to the long iron area. Here he is picking up one, possibly two on the offside. As Tim Delta chases. And there will be two runs here for right. So he at the moment is doing all the scoring. But to be fair to Trevor Franklin, he hasn't seen a lot of the strike in recent times. It's 118 without loss, and John Wright, with six fours and a six, has gone through to 70. Wright plays nicely up the back foot. That's a lovely shot. That's gone to the fence for four runs. Sweetly timed by John Wright. Nicely played by Franklin down the ground. He'll get runs here. In fact, he's timed it magnificently. This will go to the fence. Four runs. Well, Trevor Franklin just seemed to lean into that one. And it's gone to the fence. Pulled away down through mid on. What a good shot from Trevor Franklin. Pulled from outside the off stump down to long on for four runs. And that's 50 for Trevor Franklin. swings and four runs back with a square eight four for John Wright oh, and he's playing so well he's really showing the other New Zealand players how to play the Indian spinners Raju to Wright and Wright immediately gets underway again he's got one run here and he left time I think to come back for the second yes he will as Kapil Dev is having a run in the outfield. Nicely hit straight by John Wright. They've picked up two, and they may consider another. Apple Dev had the chase, and uh, three runs for John Wright. So he is now 90, and the New Zealand total is 149. Is Watson now bowling to Franklin. Franklin goes for the hook this time, and he should be caught, and he is caught by Kapildev. Trevor Franklin, rather a half-hearted attempt to hook it, and he's lobbed it down the throat of Kapildev, and the partnership is over. Trevor Franklin out for 50. It's 149 for one. The short delivery there by Watson, lifting, and Franklin not right behind it, uh, Top edge it actually to the hands of Kapil uh, Dave. A very safe hand indeed. So Franklin is out. Caught by Kapil Dave. Ball wasn't for 50. Andrew Jones yet to score. New Zealand 149 for one. And he'll have a go at hooking. Not out, says the umpire. Well, the Indian side are far from happy about that decision. Steve Woodward immediately said not out. Moray fires the ball down. Wasson has fired his jumper down. He doesn't like the decision much. Mohamed Azaruddin is trying to bring some sort of sanity to the situation. The decision has been made, and it's not out. Just calm it down, boys, and that's good captaincy from Mohamed Azaruddin. Then let's have a quick look at this. That delivery shot and not right behind ball. Andrew Jones tries to hook that ball. Uh, one cannot say from here whether he got the edge or not, uh, but uh, umpire is the best judge, standing right in front of it. Uh, with the appeal they, are, they have made, it just seems that he might have got a nick or some kind of noise over there. Wright goes over the top, and yes, four runs. Wasn't too far over the top either. Yeah. 
So the 150 is registered by New Zealand. Right using his feet and driving over long on. That delivery over pitched. Uh, right on top of that delivery, John Wright hitting that ball clear off the mid on's head. Straight for four. The long on fieldsman has gone out further now as right on 94 takes oh, strike. Well John Wright hasn't been afraid to lift the ball today. Right, still unperturbed, unperturbed, batting brilliantly. Right, clipping it away on the offside this time. That's beautifully timed by John Wright. That's gone to the fence for four. All right, John Wright is on 98, facing Edtul Wasson. Well, he ducked out of the way of it. It didn't get up all that high. John Wright's been out there for a while now, and I think he felt that on his back. Part of appeal for that, Peter. Yeah, interesting, isn't the height? Just look at this. There are, it was certainly high, but there have been worse appeals made in this match. Down to third man. There's no third man in. This will be another century for John Wright. Across the boundary line now, John Wright, 102. That's John Wright's ninth test century, his third against India. Only Martin Crowe with 10 has scored more centuries for his country. Tremendous effort. No wonder John Wright says that he likes playing against India more than any other team. Oh, he's getting a great deal of adulation here. So look at John Wright's run chart for his score of 102 not out, 189 balls faced, 46 scoring shots. 11 fours and one six, nearly 250 minutes. Some boundaries played a square of the wicket, and then those shots hit straight down the ground on the onside. A couple of leg glances there as well. Only three fours on the offside. As you say, very strong square of the wicket, three mid wicket. Oh, John Wright has lofted it away on the leg side. That's a fine shot. The ball fairly full of length, right up into. The pads of uh, John Wright, it was a no ball anyway. He got the call early, the ball was up to him, lofted it away on the, the drop kick, I suppose you'd say. Four runs. Wright, 1-1-1, one, 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 and 75 for one. Very strong on his legs. He always has been, but today he's been quite dominating. But the New Zealand batsmen have appealed against the light. Yep, they're off. Hardly surprising. Full New Zealand board reads like this then. 71 overs bowled. 178 for one. Franklin 50. John Wright, his second consecutive test century. He's the eighth New Zealand batsman to score centuries in successive test matches.